Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. My name is Philip and today we're going to be building an HP bar. So let's get right started. So first thing, this is going to be the scene that I'm going to be working on. It's just a little objects here I'm going to be placing to be using as a basis. So let's start by adding a new mesh instance 3D, which is going to be our main HP bar mesh. So let's go towards mesh and let's a new quad mesh. So this is going to be where our HP bar shader is going to be applying it. So let's move towards it just for now. So you can see what we are working with. Let's open our mesh tab here and let's set the dimensions we want. So let's put something like 1.2 and let's put 1.2 by 0.2. So we can start to have the dimensions we want. So that's done for the 3D part. Now let's go towards our geometry and let's add the new shader. So let's go right ahead and let's build a new shader and let's save under our main scene. And this is going to be the HP bar shader. And let's do a create. So now let's open the shader and let's start coding it. So one of the few things before we start, this is the, these are the main textures going to be using for the HP bar. So you're going to have to see that we have a, an albedo texture and an alpha texture. So this should be enough for us to build an HP bar and the, the motive I having them separate into two different textures because I want to have the alpha channel can be other textures as well. So let's go back to our 2D view here and let's start coding it. So I'm not going to be use the lights here so we can remove this. We're going to be using vertex and fragments. So let's start by adding a color to our shader so we can start working with it. So let's do a uniform vector tree and let's call this the bar color. And this is going to be a source color. So this is going to heave towards our mesh instance 3D here, which is our HP bar. We're going to see that it's pop up here, a new shader parameter and it's going to be our bar color that we just added. But if we change here, you're going to see it has no effect because we did not are using it. So for us to see it, Let's now import those textures here into our shader. So let's do a uniform sampler 2D. This is how you can add textures inside of your shader. So let's call this one bar texture base. And this is also going to be a source color. And we also want to apply filter linear mip map towards our shading. And we also want to disable any repeats. So repeat disabled. Now we should be able to see here another parameter that is going to be added, which now is a texture and we can add any textures we want. So let's drag and drag our albedo and let's do here our, let's create a new texture for our albedo. So now that we have a sampler, we can now use it to create a new texture. So let's do albedo is going to be equal to a new texture and our new texture is going to be based on the bar texture base. And we are going to be using our UV for the coordinates of this texture. And this by itself should be able to work. The last thing we want to say is that we only want the RGB value. So we do not want to apply alpha because albedo does not have an alpha. And as you can see, we already are seeing the texture of our albedo applying our shader. Now what we can do is multiply that albedo by our bar color. And this is going to allow us to use the color to define the color of our bar here. As you can see, that was what it looks like. So let's put something like VBFFF. So I know it's a color I like. So as you can see, this is what it looks like. Now let's start adding here some flags to our render mode to make this look a bit nicer, make this look a little more like a HP bar. So let's do a render mode and let's do blend mix. Next, we want a depth refall to be opaque, so we do not want any transparency. This to be mixed with other transparent materials. Next, we also want a cooling to be happening on the back of the normals. We want the back face of our shader, if we just comment that out. We want to see the front face, but not the back face, because that's an uh, unwanted part of our shader. And let's do a, another change in diffuse to be diffuse tune. So this is going to look more cartoonish. So if I disable this, you're going to see the effect it has. So there we go. 
Also, we want to disable specular and the shadows. So we do not also, sh we do not want shadows to be applied to our shaders. So shadows and specular should be disabled. I'm going to see this improves a little bit. The next one we want is for it to not be shaded. So we do not want any shade whatsoever. And also we want these objects to appear in front of other objects. So you're going to see that we do not see the HP bar behind the sphere. So the way you can make it appear is by typing here another flag, which is going to be a death test disabled. So this in turn is going to allow us to see our mesh behind other objects. And this is exactly what we want. So now we are starting to see our H bar is getting a little more close to what we want. The next thing we want is to add the HB bar alpha texture. So let's duplicate this line by doing Ctrl Shift D and let's do bar texture and let's call this alpha. So now we can pass our alpha parameter here. And just as a reminder, can do this on a single texture, but I want to keep them separate because you can have multiple effects with an HP bar. You can mix match other textures here. The next, what we want is to say that our alpha is going to be equal towards our texture, which is going to be our bar texture alpha. And we want to grab the alpha value out of it. So now we're going to be applying the alpha texture on top of it. Of course, I forgot about applying the UV here. So now it should work. So this is what it looks like. So it's just the albedo with the alpha on top of it. So that is what it looks like. So that is why the albedo texture has those black rectangles because I'm using this to create kind of a shadow around the HP bar. As you see here, there's a dark outline around the HP bar. So now let's talk about creating the progress texture. So let's go right ahead and let's add here a new parameter. So this is going to be a uniform float, which is going to be a progress. So this is the variable name. And we want it to be able to slide here. So let's pass in a hint of range and let's see what this looks like. So here you can see on the parameter, we have a hint range from zero to one but it's actually on 0.1 element. So we want a little more control. So let's put 001 there. So we can have a little more fine tuning here. So now that you have that, we can go right ahead here and multiply our albedo texture by a progress bar. But now we need to build the bar that's going to be controlling that. So let's create a new variable here, which is going to be a float. So let's call this progress texture. And let's start first with just a step uh, generating texture here. So for the step generating texture, we want to pass an edge. So the edge is going to be our progress texture and we want to pass the X value to be our UV dot X. So with just this, we should be able to see what's happening by multiplying it finally after our texture is multiplied by our bar color to be multiplied towards our progress texture. So now whenever we change the progress, you're going to see the effect it has on the HP bar here. So this is what it looks like behind objects and stuff. So we want to invert this because currently it's filling the bar on the wrong side. We want it to follow this progress here. So let's invert here our progress variable and also the UV. So now the texture should be swapped to the other side and now it's filling on the right side. So cool. So another thing we can uh, change here is instead of only doing a step, we want to add a, make a little more transition between the zero and one values. So the way we can do that is by using a smooth step. And this is not going to change all that much. We just need to pass another argument here. So I'm going to copy the progress and I'm going to be pasting here. Now, the last thing we want is to pass here is to pass here an offset. So let's do something like 0 0.15, just so you can understand what's happening. So from the zero and one value is going to create a transition and the offset you're going to pass here is going to be the size of that transition. So if you make it pretty big, like 35, you're going to see how that looks like. And depending on the game you want, you can use the, the bar like this. So you can say a more tight value like 0 0.03. You're going to see the effect it has. So the bar now 
it's much more tight on the control part. I think I like it on 0 0.5. So it creates a little bit of transition, but not that much. And this, of course, depends on the style of the bar you want. So now we have a smooth step value from 0 to 1. So whenever it is 0, this multiplying our albedo texture towards black. That's why you have a black. So you have a black foreground despite having on your texture here the full bar. So that is how it works. So let's go back here and now let's take care of some things. So we want it to change the color based on its reaching. So whenever it's almost at zero, we want to change its color back to red. So it's look like the unit is about to die. So for us to do that, let's create another color here we're going to be using. And let's call this one bar color. Let's call this when it's empty. So whenever it's reaching zero, we want to change the color. And we want to be a little bit of red, but not that bright red. So let's put on the dark side. Now, how we can mix those two textures? So whenever we are multiplied by the bar color here, so it's the texture multiplied by the bar color, then the progress texture. We're going to create a new function here. It's going to be our mix function. It's going to be mixing the two colors. So here we want to mix the main bar color with our bar empty color. And it's going to need a parameter to control by how much we want to mix those two. So let's do our progress texture. So we're going to be multiplying this by our progress texture multiplied by, let's say, 2.5. So now whenever the bar is going to be reaching on the bottom there, it's going to be multiplying it. And because it's higher than one, this value is going to make the bar glow. So the idea with this is for us to add an offset on the back here. So let's add something like 2.5. And I'm going to be adding that to this formula here. And you're going to see the effect it has. So whenever the bar is reaching close to zero, you're going to see that it's multiplying it. So this is exactly what we want, but the only issue here is the values are going to be lower than zero and higher than one. So if we decrease the offset here for the mixture between the two colors, you're going to see that the bar is on the color we want, but whenever it reaches a higher value, it's going to start to glow. So the way we can fix that is by on this part of here of the code, we're going to be clamping that value. So I'm going to be creating a minimum and maximum value for this. So it does not overblow it and make it glow or reaches a darker. So the final step here is to add a clamp function. It's going to be clamping this formula here. And the minimum value wants to be zero and the maximum amount is going to be one. So this clamp value is going to be the factor of between the mixture of the blue color towards the red color. So now on one is going to keep at maximum one for the blue color. And whenever we reach a lower value is going to reach. And you see that at this point it's completely on the second color. So this is how you can control the transition between two colors for our HP bar. This is pretty much it. Now the shader is complete and you have an HP bar. So the last step for us is to be controlling some aspects here on the vertex side of things. So you're going to see that your HP bar is going to behave like a 3D bar, which you can look behind of it and it's not going to follow the camera. So we want to make it towards like a working like a sprite where it always sticks towards the camera. It always facing the camera. So the way you can do that is by going here towards our vertex shader and I'm going to paste the code that's going to basically create that effect, the billboard effect towards our bar here. So as you can see, this is the code that does that. So it's some math here with matrix that's going to make our bar always sticks towards the camera. And as you can see, if we have our bar here and we move the camera, you're going to see that it's always facing the camera no matter what. So this is something we want for our game. But let's say for your game, you also want to have a fixed size. So let's say that you want to your bar to never scale down. So whenever the camera zooms out, you still see the bar pretty big on the screen. You can apply this also bit of code here, which basically is going to keep a fixed size for your 3D bar. So as you can see, it doesn't matter the distance from the camera. It calculates based on the Y4 of the camera, so it can keep a fixed scale. And you can adjust the scale here. 
So let's say something like 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and as you can see, it stays put. So depending on the game, you want the bar to be always visible on the screen, like a first person shooter or something, you can use this part of the code. But such is the case with the RTS, I'm not going to use it. So you can basically comment that out. And let's put this back where it was. So as you can see, that is how you do it. Now you have an HP bar that follows the camera, you can see behind objects, and you can pretty much control its progress using the parameter here from the shader. So let me just minimize that, and here's the progress. So now the last step is for you to hook up the progress texture here, generated with this shader parameter. So you're going to set the shader parameter for the progress variable here towards the HP of the unit. So this is the second part of this tutorial, how you hook up the shader here with a given unit. So now that you have the HP bar, you can basically fix it towards the feet of your units maybe a little bit in there and basically you have an HP bar for your units so whenever you want just set the instance shader here to the thing you want now one of the things I want to talk about before I forget is that this is a uniform float so the uniform here is not per instance to show you what happens so if you duplicate this HP bar for another unit and let's say or also another unit. So we're going to have, I grabbed the wrong one. So this guy here, be right there. And you can see whenever we change the progress, all bars are going to follow it. So how do you set this variable to be per unique bar? You don't have to make this shader unique for every single unit in the game. There's a thing called Ningudo, which is an instance uniform. And this basically is going to make so that parameter you saw there now belongs to the object and not to the material resource. So now this parameter is not inside the material itself, it's inside our object node. So the reason you want to do this is because you're going to be having the HP bar to have different values based on the instance shader parameter. So this is how you actually should do it. So now you can have the same material have a different input parameter per object, but just by using the instance keyword here. That is what you can do with it. And you can also do that with the instance bar color. So you can have different colors per object. But on this case, I don't think I need that. So that is how you can work this out. And you can basically do this with other things as well. So pretty cool stuff to be able to do this. This was not possible to do before Godot 4.0, I believe. This was something introduced in 4.0. So pretty cool stuff. So this is how you can build your own shader inside Godot for a RTS game HP bar. So if you want to see how you can hook up this shader with code and GDScript towards a given RTS project, see the other video where I talk about how you can convert the values between the HP back to this shader 0 and 1, so we can scroll this progress bar accordingly with the values of the HP of the given unit. So if you like this tutorial, I recommend you to watch the second part and see how you can do that. If you want to grab this shader, it's posted on goodoldshaders.com, and if you want the project file from this tutorial, it's going to be on my eShop page. So that's about it for this tutorial, I'll see you guys on the next video.